graves and examined the teeth. And in some of the areas he found at the time of death, which was usually between 70 and 80 years of age, uh, these people had one cavity per 1,000 teeth at the time of death. And now it is very difficult to find that in kids two years old. And, you know, they haven't had their teeth very long. So where does uh, dental decay come from? Well, the uh, if you can believe this as a quotation of science, the Dental Association had a vote on where they thought dental decay came from. And then Ralph Steinman, back in the 50s, uh, was a researcher at uh, Loma Linda University in California, and he did research there for, oh gosh, what, maybe uh, 30 years or more. He did some very fine, the finest research on where dental decay comes from that anyone has ever done. And his work is not even taught at Loma Linda anymore, much less the rest of the dental schools. So my question is, why does dentistry not want you to know where cavities come from? You know, they say, oh, use fluoride and brush and floss your teeth and keep the bacteria level down. What do you think about that? Well, that's what I'm talking about today. What I think about it is that Ralph Steinman, in his over 70 publications over a period of 35 years, came up with where dental decay comes from. Dental decay is a systemic disease. It is not local factors. It's not a bacteria sitting on a tooth uh, with a drill uh, that drills a hole in a tooth and causes a cavity. Uh, that kind of goes along with tooth worms, which was uh, 200 years ago. There were tooth worms that caused dental decay. All right, let's look at it from the uh, scientific standpoint. Um, now Steinman selected the rat as a model for human decay because the process of decay in a rat is identical to the process in man. Uh, whether this shows something about evolution or not, I'm not sure. But that part of it is the same. Now, the diet that he selected to create dental decay was a 62% sugar diet, which is approximately what's in a candy bar. And he found that by feeding these animals a diet of 62% sugar, he could create about six cavities per, equated to man years, six cavities per year. Uh, then he tried other things like milk, and with a diet of milk uh, as the total diet, um, ended up with uh, approximately eight cavities per year. So more from milk than there was from the 62% sugar diet. Then he studied soy milk, which is very popular now. He got 9.6 cavities with soy milk per year. And then the winner was chocolate milk at about 23 cavities per year. So he found that um, the diet has a whole lot to do with where cavities come from. But what is diet doing? What diet is doing is stimulating a fluid flow through the tooth. Now, most of the time, we kind of consider teeth as non-living structures. Well, they are living structures. There is a pulp chamber in the middle of the tooth, and there is a fluid that comes from the bloodstream. It's blood serum. that goes from the pulp chamber through the dentin, through the enamel, to the surface of the tooth when there is no decay because that's a self-cleansing action and it is bringing nutrient to all portions of the tooth. In fact, the dentin, which is the second layer of the tooth underneath the enamel, contains a chemical called chondroitin sulfate, which has something to do with uh, one of the metabolic shields, one of the things that keeps teeth alive. That regenerates, 50% of it regenerates every one hour. So the tooth is a living structure. And using radioactive, a chemical called acroflavin hydrochloride, he was able to trace this fluid flow from the center of the tooth through the dentin, through the enamel, to the surface of the tooth in one hour. So that fluid flow went pretty fast. There was no decay. Now, 
if you turn that around so that you are feeding the 62% sugar diet instead of the Purina lab chow, which was considered pretty pure, then the fluid flow turned around. And it went from the mouth through the enamel, through the dentin, into the pulp chamber. So it could create death of the pulp chamber because we see this in dentistry. You see a tooth that is dying, the pulp chamber is gone. You can see an abscess at the bottom. There's no decay in it. Hey, how'd that happen? Well, you got hit in the mouth with a baseball bat. No, there was never any trauma. Where did it come from? This is where it comes from. But mostly what it's doing, as the fluid comes into the tooth, it is bringing the debris and the bacteria from the mouth into the tooth, demineralizing it on the way, which we see on x-ray as a black spot. That's demineralization, and actually from the x-ray, uh, this was one of the first courses I took when I got out of dental school, uh, showing that decay usually goes about four times further than what it looks like on x-ray. And what we did was to take x-rays and uh, draw pictures, draw a pencil line on the x-ray of how big we thought the filling was going to be. Then we would go back to our offices, fill that tooth, take an x-ray, and come back and see, oh, it's a whole lot bigger than we thought. So that's the advantage of... <clears throat> So that's the advantage of catching decay early in the game, because by the time you see it, it is already penetrated. Well, this is a good idea if you weren't filling it up with mercury. But uh, Snyman carried this study a little bit farther because um, he found that um, you know there were basically four things that the that dentistry was saying was causing dental decay. They were the hardness of the enamel the acid attack on the enamel, bacterial invasion, and heredity. So he studied each of these four individually. But he started out feeding the 62% sugar diet by mouth. Then he um, put the 62% sugar in a solution, put it in a stomach tube, and put it directly into the stomach so that it didn't touch the tooth. So if it didn't touch the tooth, there could not be an acid attack. Uh, it wouldn't have anything to do with the hardness of the enamel. It wouldn't have anything with the bacterial invasion. Putting it directly in the stomach, he found the same number of cavities in the same period of time. So then he went another step farther in injecting the 62% sugar diet into the body cavity. You know, just squirt it not into the stomach, but into the... Uh, area around the stomach and the liver and all these guys running around in there just squirted in there. And he found the exactly the same number of cavities. So this showed that there must be a systemic reason for dental decay. Well, what about the bacteria? Uh, this was rather interesting. I learned a new word, notobiotic. Now, what in the world is <laughs> notobiotic? I'd never heard of that one before. No bacteria. It is sterile. It's the bubble type of environment. So in there, there were no bacteria. And what did he find? On the 62% sugar diet, he had exactly the same number of cavities. So bacteria do not have anything to do with it except when the fluid flow is coming into the tooth it drags bacteria along with it. Now, when I was in school, there was a certain bacteria that caused dental decay. And evidently, there was a massive international meeting of bacteria, and they changed that. And today, there's a different bacteria that is supposed to cause dental decay. Well, just because it was standing there doesn't mean it's the cause. And especially with the uh, notobiotic environment where there are no bacteria, if you still get cavities, how can you possibly say that bacteria cause dental decay? They don't. It is the demineralization when the, that occurs when the fluid is flowing into the tooth. Well, the next logical question is, who is controlling the fluid flow? And he found that that was an endocrine function. The hormone-producing gland, it is from the parotid gland. The parotid gland in the cheek manufactures a hormone called parotid hormone, 
when the parotid hormone is at a certain level, the fluid flow goes from the pulp chamber through the dentin, through the enamel, into the mouth. The teeth have a glisten to it, and people say, oh, what pretty teeth you have. When the parotid...